we wait, you know, another two days for this to tip off or two nights rather. And you could probably make a case if you really wanted to, you could think, well, I like the Celtics. I like the Mavericks. I like the over. I like the under because the more time we have to break down a game, the more spin cycles we can do. But when it comes down to the series in totality, I mean, we're talking about a Celtics team that before the postseason against Dallas is minus four dollars. That's the truth. I mean, it's maybe even higher, minus 420, minus 430. And everything you watch, whether it be Bill Simmons or Stephen A. Smith or Zach Lowe or whoever, oh, the Celtics can't stop Luka and Kyrie. And all of that narrative-driven crap brings the price down. And people watching these shows go, oh, Dallas, I like Dallas, plus 180. And it's, it's almost too cheap on the better team, the deeper team, you mentioned if Tatum doesn't go off, they have Jalen Brown, Porzingis is back. There's not really a coaching edge, Joe, like there was in the last series when Carlisle ran circles around Joe Missoula. Everything to me points to Boston, and I'm not even the biggest Boston guy, but in terms of the series price, minus 210 in the market is cheap on the seeds. Yeah, Sam, you're right about uh, some of the talking points out there. Listen, it, it doesn't always work out this way, but – Right now, it feels like the day before we tip off, the Sharps are on the Celtics, the public's on the Mavs. Like, that's just what it is. And part of it might be because people want to see Luka finally break through. We've been waiting for that MVP season. Maybe the championship season happens here. But I do think there is something be behind the Mavs, Steve. Like, it, it's not just like people love Luka and they're going to back him. Like Kyrie, this is a different version of Kyrie that we've seen throughout his entire career. People in Boston just asked them. Um, P.J. Washington has stepped up through the playoffs with big shots. Is it going to happen again in the NBA Finals? I don't know. S supporting cast-wise, I mean, the trade for Gafford in Washington, huge. Doubt, these are the two teams since the trade deadline. They have the best records in the NBA. So they've certainly earned that spot. And I do understand why there is some backing on the Dallas side. If you get to a game seven scenario, which side do you want? You probably want the side with Luka, right? He's the best player in the series. So I do understand the support that the Mavs are getting, but I, Sam brings up a good point. This has been the favorite throughout. No matter what the matchup was, they were going to be favored, the Celtics, to win the title here. So, um, yeah, with all that love on the Mavs' side and, you know, a bunch of those 30-to-1s, 40-to-1s piling up throughout the season, you are getting a decent price on boss. So if we simply look at the correct series result market at BetMGM, guys, the best number is actually, or not the best number, the lowest odds are actually on Boston in five. Celtics four to one is at just three to one. That's the shortest price out there. Uh, when you start to, to widen out the view of this thing, it goes Boston five, Boston and six, Dallas and six, then Boston and seven before you get to Dallas and seven all the way out there at six to one. Joe, you hunt value. Is there value in this market? Correct series result. And uh, just how do you envision this thing playing out once it actually gets started tomorrow night? So naturally you're, you're going to see the favorite and you're going to see the favorite, especially at home in those spots be up near the top. But the amount of times it's every year, not just this year, but the amount of road games that teams win. I mean, it's, it happens consistently. That's where you end up finding value. So if you're on the Dallas side, yeah, I'd be fine saying Dallas can close it out on the road. And that's how you end up getting a lot more value. So if you are hunting on the Dallas side, I guess that's where the value's at. Um, but yeah, like the minus 225 price, you see it right here. The top three correct scores listed everywhere are in favor of, of uh of boston but yeah if you're looking to add a little extra value sammy i would uh take a look at maybe dallas closing it out on the road if you're gonna be back in the mass we're gambling now right how long does the series yeah. go like we really know yep. we just look at the best price and go oh there's value on that number i love the value conversation value is the most overplayed word in this space oh there's value on that 30 to 1 dog and then you know he doesn't really play pj washington to win finals mvps like 300 to 1 Oh, there's value. He's not winning. No, you know, like yeah, we always matter. We put the word value on a big dog. I was actually, you know, the question was, how do you like the series to end? I want to look at how the series starts. BetMGM has a market on Celtics winning the first game 
and Celtics winning the series. And that's minus 125. And when you really think about it, like Boston should win the first game. I get that they've been sluggish early in series for the last three or four years, but they're a six-point chalk at home. They're minus 250 on the money line in game one. So, yeah, they should probably win the first game, and then they should probably win the series. I think that's a really good market to pay attention to. Celtics win game one, win the series, like minus a quarter, minus 130 at MGM. That's a really good number. And here's the other thing. If they win game one, the series price goes to what? Boston minus $4? And then you could come back and you could technically take Mavericks plus 350 and now you're free rolling. Yeah. Yeah. You're working both sides. That's a good look. Um, series spread. If you really think the Celtics are going to handle this thing, I don't want to say with no problem. That's, that's not the way to say it, but not let this get to seven. Right. And you talk about closing things out on the road. Maybe the Celtics close it out on the road in six um, Celtics on the series spread at minus one and a half plus money just barely plus 105 but a little bit better than even money sam that's a look i think if you really believe that the mavericks don't simply have the depth to hang with boston in this series i was actually looking at the scotty scheffler and celtics win the series parlay Ooh, did you guys play with this yet no, well like the scheffler like the the top 10 scheffler insurance bet has been awesome this season like he needs to finish not in top not top five, it's top 10. Scheffler top 10, Celtics win the series, plus 115. Come on. Okay. Let's, let's Come on! Scheffler top That's five, nice. at least. You can get better. What are we Stand paying now on that? It is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, he's so freaking good. Even when he's terrible, he's still finishing top five. Like, we Even think he's when he's terrible. getting arrested on the first day of the tournament, he's still handling right. things pretty well. I mean, right. plus 190. There you go. Hashtag yeah, value, Joe. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, I mean, look, as far as the correct scores and how those line up, my point is the odds are saying that Dallas in six is more likely than Dallas in seven. Mm, I disagree with that because I, I get Luca in a game seven and Boston, the big favorite. Yeah, they're probably going to win more than two games in the series i think we all can say that safely it's just like sometimes the 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 home court is a little bit over overvalued and we and we see the swing from site to site um i hate this i hate it because of the reaction that i'm seeing but the first thing that jumps out to me as far as series spread is dallas plus one and a half plus one and a half games so if they win it or they push it to seven Mm -hmm. uh you're good there it's it's not going to be Dallas in six. I don't see that. If Dallas could push it to a seventh game, and then then you're clear, and then obviously a series win there. But uh, yeah, that that's something that I've been considering. Dallas plus one and a half games, which is minus one fifteen, minus one twenty. All all the more reason to fade the Jets, my friends. Um, I will be riding that train until Aaron Rodgers makes me look stupid. And I don't think he will. Um, this is just interesting um, that Reddick is doing it in light of the fact that he kind of said he'd be on not best behavior, but said he'd come to New York. And yeah, I don't, I don't have any problem. I'll do what I got to do. Uh, new team. And all of a sudden, to your point, Paul, uh, Sala just isn't even hearing from him. That's interesting to me. That's, hey, give me more money or else maybe I won't play. Big fat zero for me. I know double-digit sack seasons last four years. He's he's putting together a nice career here. But uh, now we're entering, what, year number eight of his career. How have those defenses been, by the way? Arizona, Carolina, Philadelphia the last couple of years. My God, it was the Eagles' defense. Pathetic last season. Look, the Jets' defense is not viewed as a quality one because of Hassan Reddick. It's, it's the other pieces, the back end. Uh, Sauce Gardner, guys like Quinn and Williams, as long as he stays healthy, you know, they added Kinlaw. So, I mean, yeah, he's an important piece, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to change my outlook on the season until he's happy and he gets his contract. It'll all get worked out anyways.